Welcome to the new year. It is episode 46 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host. And yes, we've changed the name of the podcast. Not too much. We have changed the name. And uh, Dealers Compressed, we started with automotive and we started with a, a large automotive focus and realized that throughout the year, there are a lot of other reasons that people kind of tune in and listen and connect. So we're still going to talk automotive, but we're also going to talk a lot of other things as we've really been for the last six months. So we're going to talk about business growth, um, motivation and that encouragement that keeps us going. We're going to have a lot of amazing guests and we're going to broaden the scope just a little bit because we realize people tune in for a broader scope of content. So we're not ignoring automotive. We're still going to have a focus there and some really uh, in unique insights into that industry, but we're also going to broaden it out a little bit. So if you're watching this on the day we released it, happy new year because it's New Year's Day. And I personally like the new year. I know it's just another day and this year it's just a Tuesday, but you know, what you do inside your head is so much more important than what day of the week it is. And having a day where it kind of the, the meter resets and we get a fresh start just does something for me internally. So I, for one, like the new year because it makes it easier to just kind of leave your accomplishments and your failures and kind of hit a reset button. So welcome to the new year. Thanks for spending some time with me and with us here. So New Year's time. Today, we're going to talk uh, resolutions and goals. I thought, you know, a lot of people do that New Year, so I don't want to bore you with some kind of really kitschy sayings about, you know, it's a new beginning and all that stuff. But I do want to give you some practical things because in the spirit of clarity, having some clarity going into the new year really can make a big difference. And I'm going to tell you how um, experience that I had that really changed the way I, you know, go forward. And I accomplished some great things because of a little bit of focus. So, New Year's resolutions, lots of people have them. Like next week, every gym that you drive by is going to be full of people running on the treadmill and you know on the elliptical, and it's just going to be busy. And then like the next week, it'll probably still be busy. By the end of January, it's going to be less busy. By February, it's probably going to be pretty close to normal uh, attendance. Why? Because people make a New Year's resolution. They say, I'm going to get fit this year, or I'm going to be get in shape. And the difference between, I'll call it a dream, right? And, and I'll put resolutions in the same category as dream for this. A dream or a resolution, the difference between that and a goal is a time frame, right? Because if you can't say, I'm going to get in shape, it's like, great. It sounds like a great resolution or a great dream. But if you say, I'm going to lose 20 pounds in, over the next 12 weeks, and I'm going to eat, I don't know, less meat, less red meat than I am now, or I'm going to limit my sugar intake to a certain amount of grams per day. That's specific now. And there's a time frame. So your dream has just become a goal. And somebody that's helped me a ton with this over the years and really changed my perspective is a man named Michael Hyatt. And we're going to put a link. Um, it's michaelhyatt.com, H-Y-A-T-T.com. And we're going to put a link in the bio, but he has an approach to goal setting and he talks a lot about leadership and for high performers and how to, to kind of really hone and refine things in. And he says he takes the SMART approach. It's an acronym, S-M-A-R-T. He recently, I think, added an E and an R, but it's really a framework to set goals so that you can actually accomplish them. And I might need a little help reading here, but basically the SMART, right? It's specific, right? You have to name exactly what it is. It's measurable, SM, right? You have to be able to measure your progress and track it because if you can't, then it's not a good goal. It's got to be actionable. It's going to be something that you can take steps on right now, right? You can't say, I'm going to set a goal and I can't start for nine months. No, you have to be able to start now so that you can make three, write down three steps that you have to take the next three steps. Um, the R is realistic. Let's face it. If you set an unrealistic goal, you're just setting yourself up, up for failure and you're not going to be happy. You're going to be less happy than you are now with whatever the situation is. So it has to be realistic. Set a goal you can hit because if you say, I'm going to sell X amount of cars next year or X amount of homes or 
and it's really not a possible goal to hit, then you're just going to be disappointed and it's demotivating. The point is to keep yourself motivated while you're on the path to your goal. Um, the T is for, oh, what is the T? <laughs> the T is for time bound. That's right. It's a hyphenated word. So the T is for time bound. You have to set a limit. Like your know, difference between a dream and a goal is a timeline. So you have to set a time limit because you know how it is. If we can push it off, we will because we're human beings. Um, so that's smart, specific, measurable, actional, um, realistic, and time bound. And recently there were two more letters added, the ER, and that is for exciting, right? Set a goal that actually gets you pumped up and gets you wanting to go because that actually helps with the motivation part, which we all know the motivation is nine tenths of the struggle. And, uh, the, the R, the last R is relevant. So how does it fit into your overall life? How does it fit into where you want to end up? You know, so the year that I started doing this, I had not had much success with keeping a goal throughout the course of the year. I hadn't had a ton. So I wrote down some goals and they don't have to be in one area. I think for me, it, it's really easy to start writing down a bunch of business goals because it's just the first thing that comes naturally. But basically in life, right? We need clarity in the whole person. So that's our family life and that's our physical health. And that's also our business objectives and maybe some personal interests things um, because that helps keep life well-rounded and helps keep us emotionally and spiritually and physically healthy because it's all one person, right? There's no work life and home life. It's all one person. So some of the things that I did um, one, I had a shoulder injury. Hey, Derek, you know what's always good for shoulder pain? That was really bothering me. And I just kept putting it off and putting it off. It was making it so that I couldn't do any kind of exercise. I couldn't play basketball. I couldn't do a lot of things, but I, I was just so busy that I didn't have time for my body. So I wrote down a goal and that goal was to address my so shoulder industry, in industry, address my shoulder industry, <laughs> address my shoulder injury. And because I knew that had other side effects through life. So when I wrote that down, right, it was, I said, address this by the end of March, right? So I made it time bound. And then I wrote down some next steps like set appointment. That's a step. I have to set an appointment to go see the doctor. And then it was do what the doctor said. Step two, number three, start doing light exercise again, right? And then, so the little, the little steps, um, you could actually break those steps out even further. Set appointment, number one. Go to appointment, number two, because you can set it, right? But if you don't go, it doesn't matter. So there's shoulder injury one. In, in my business, I had been feeling like we were separated and disjointed. It would be really helpful if we had regular meetings together. So the goal I set was to have a quarterly meeting where I brought everyone on our team. And now our team at this point was getting bigger and it was spread out by like 500 miles. So I needed to, it was a really significant investment of time and money to really shut down for the day and have everybody travel in and it's expensive to have everybody travel in and of course the lost revenue was the most expensive part but it was important so it forced me to write down why it was important it forced me to start put some next steps in order and you know what once we did that we started growing even faster even better um we started our internal communication increased quite a bit our business results went up why because now I had prioritized as the CEO that it's important that we communicate. It's important that we're in the same room because you can do things remotely, but I said it's important that we're in the same room. And we really pivoted the company from, um, from a much more lackadaisical operational um, tracking mode. Like, so we were tracking much more loosely than we should as far as financial performance and expenses and P&Ls. And once we got in the same room, it really turned that around and helped everybody work better together. So again, Set goals that are reasonable and setting a goal doesn't mean just saying I hope or I want or I wish to do this thing. If you just take a second, write down three things you want to accomplish in 2019. Just by writing it down, you make yourself 50% more likely to accomplish it. And then check the link out and go through some of the steps. And I'll tell you, if you put like 20 minutes into it, you are way more likely to accomplish some of those goals. So I hope that's a little clarity in the new year for you. Uh, talking about the new year, what do I expect from this new year? I expect more personal growth. I expect more clarity. I expect our agency to grow and help more people get brand clarity and dial in their marketing and accomplish their business object objectives. I expect more personal connection with the community. 
uh, more live events. We're having ClarityCon. If I hadn't told you before, ClarityCon is going to be an event where you can come in and we're going to have a number of different things when in personal life and business life specifically where um, we're going to help and enrich you towards the steps that you want to accomplish. Not exactly sure what the event's going to look like, but if you want to be the first to know, you can sign up at pursueclarity.com. Uh, we're also going to link that below. Um, I expect more uncertainty in the economy and political um, environment. It's just uh, all the writings on the wall. So let's be realist. But I also know and believe that I don't know even how to say it. I'm trying to say it kindly. If you think the political climate affects your success in business, well, then you're very disillusioned and you're already off on the wrong step. It doesn't matter who's president. It doesn't matter um, what Congress is fighting about. It doesn't matter if there's a government shutdown. I mean, I guess in some businesses that would affect it a little bit more if you do a lot of government work. But in the bottom line, like take some ownership and responsibility. Don't blame it on the economy. Don't blame it on the political environment. Take the bull by the horn. So I expect more uncertainty. So just get ready right now. Like there's opportunity when those things happen, if you're mentally prepared for it. I expect to be out and about more, you know, so January, for instance, upcoming events, I'm going to be out uh, three weeks next or out on the road three weeks in January, not full three weeks, but little spots here and there. Uh, starting on uh, January 10th, January 10th, I'm going to be speaking at the Mobile Tech Expo. So this is a trade um, this is a trade event for people in the reconditioning business is something that I've had booked for quite a while. And I'm going to be uh, teaching a session and talking about building your business with a legacy mindset. So um, really just sharing out of what I did with a small business, uh, a one person business at in the beginning and said, I never want to build this business to do anything by myself. So when I started it, I structured it as if I had one employee. And then when I had one, I structured it as if I had 10. And then when I had 10, let's structure as if we had 25. When we got to 25, let's structure it as we as if we have 50. And when the business, uh, the automotive reconditioning business that I started was acquired earlier in the year, uh, we were actually structuring it for 100. So building your business with a legacy mindset, we're talking practical things. We're also going to be talking a lot of company culture and a lot of those other, you can call them softer things, but those are the things that I can really accredit to the success because people have to have purpose in what they do and the purpose has to be authentic. So January 10th in Orlando, Mobile Tech Expo, we'll link it up below. Um, next, January 16th and 17th, the much anticipated Agent 2021 conference in Miami, Florida. I'm going to be there 16th and 17th, just walking the floor and meeting people. Uh, we're going to have a video feature, so they're going to feature us on, you know, the the giant scoreboard stuff in Miami Dolphin Stadium, which is going to be super cool. Um, but I'll be there. So if you're around, come say hi. Um, I'll be wearing this because this is about what I wear all the time. January 24th through 27th, uh, the Auto News Retail Forum and specifically the NADA convention in San Francisco. I'm going to be teaching a session on Saturday, the 26th at 1030. Crash Course in Dealership Branding, going to be teaching dealers how and why brand matters and how they can start deploying. So that's the big automotive event of the year. So if you're in the auto industry, hit me up. I'll be there all week. Would love to meet you. Would love to talk about some stuff. And um, if you need something to do on Saturday at 1030, want to learn a little bit about branding, I would love to have you there. Uh, we're expecting a good turnout and a, a really a good time. So that's really it for New Year's. You have New Year's celebrations to get back to. In this coming year, I'm going to be doing a lot more on social media. So if you're not following along, whatever's easiest for you, um, you know, I have an Instagram account at Paul the Daily, and that's kind of the more personal side as far as the stories and all that. Um, LinkedIn, I do a lot of work on LinkedIn, professional community. A lot of the people on this pot that listen and watch and uh, consume this podcast, look, we're professionals. So we want to grow in business. We want to grow personally. LinkedIn is a great place to do that. Also on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, I hope you, you join up there. I think we're going to get YouTube fired up this year. I think it's YouTube year. So all that to say, thank you so much for listening to the Clarity Compressed podcast. Looking forward to having you as a member of the community this year and looking forward to a lot of good things. I have to say my expectations for 2019 are pretty high. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great new year and I will talk to you soon. How long was that? Oh my gosh, Patrick's going to kill.